Hi guys, my name is Spencer. Welcome to Sphinx Reads. We know that 2020 has been kind of a tough year for all of us. So today I want to recommend some books that are hopeful or just really comforting or just generally feel good books so that we can kind of, you know, cure ourselves of what's happened in 2020 and have sort of a fresh start going into the new year. So let's dive right into it. Obviously people have different reading tastes and some people find certain books comforting and other people don't find those books comforting because you know it's a preference thing. Like some people find comfort in thrillers or horror stories but I personally don't. So all of these books are going to be kind of just generally just really feel good books. Before I get into my top 10 picks, I do have some honorable mentions. If you're the type of reader who likes to read inspirational books and stories, you probably know the author Mitch Albom. I'll be recommending two of his books because these are the only ones that I've read, but I've heard that pretty much any Mitch Albom book is an inspirational book, just really positive, really feel good, really heartwarming. One of his books is The Five People You Meet in Heaven. This story follows a guy named Eddie who dies in an accident at an amusement park, and he meets five people in sort of heaven. And these people kind of explain to him what his role in their lives was and they teach him a lot of great lessons along the way. The next one is a pretty popular book, Tuesdays with Maury. This story is I think a memoir. Yes it is. It says a memoir. I'm pretty sure there are some fiction elements to it. I might be wrong. So basically this story follows um, Mitch Album himself learning life lessons from one of his old professors, um, Maury Schwartz. They basically meet every Tuesday. Maury teaches Mitch some life lessons and it's just a really heartwarming read. Highly recommended. The next honorable mention I have is The Gift by Richard Ball Evans. This story is about a guy with Tourette's syndrome. I'm not sure that's how you say it, but it's basically this illness where they have like frequent tics, like they have to do a certain something to be kind of still and at peace. I'm not sure. I don't think it's the same for every person that has Tourette's, but for this character, he has to ha touch like sharp objects to kind of like remain calm. And then one day he meets this young mother with her son who has cancer and the son touches him and then he notices that his Tourette's syndrome symptoms have disappeared. It's kind of a Christmas romance story, it's very similar to a lot of the Hallmark movies, so definitely recommend it if you are looking for kind of a holiday themed romance book. The next one I believe is a modern classic and that is Jonathan Livingston Siegel by Richard Bach. A very short story, um, it has illustrations to, oh you can't really see it, but it has illustrations too. Basically, Jonathan Livingston Siegel is kind of a parable. It follows a seagull, the main character, Jonathan Livingston Siegel, and kind of his journey trying to reach new heights. We all know that seagulls kind of fly low, but he wants to soar higher and kind of reach his full potential. So this is a really heartwarming, inspiring read, so definitely check it out. Okay, now let's get to my top 10 picks for comforting slash hopeful slash feel good reads. So the first one is from a very popular author, I believe. I mean, he used to be popular in like late 90s and like early 2000s, and that is pa Paulo Coelho. I'm not sure that's how you say his name, but the first book I'm gonna recommend is The Alchemist. The Alchemist follows a shepherd boy, um, Santiago, I think, yeah, a shepherd boy, Santiago, who is in search of treasure. It's kind of, it's not like a treasure hunting story, but basically he has to find this treasure, I forgot, how or why? But he goes on this long journey, he meets like really interesting people, one of which is the alchemist, who I think is supposed to help him um, find the treasure. And it's a really, I love Paulo Coelho's writing, it's really immersive, it's really just heartwarming, and there's a lot of awesome quotes from this book, like I should probably give it a reread um, sometime. But the main reason I am recommending this is the ending. Oh my gosh, The Alchemist probably has one of the most satisfying endings I've ever read. And not to get into spoilers, but it has something to do with how exactly he finds the treasure he is looking for. The next book I'm going to recommend is Wonder by RJ Palacio. It is one of my favorite books of all time. It's actually one of the only two books that have actually made me physically cry. I still remember finishing this book like just right before I went into a class a few years back. And while I was in that class, I was just crying the entire time because of how just like really emotional I was by the end of the book. This follows our main character, Augie Pullman, who has Treacher Collins Syndrome. It is a middle grade read, I don't know if I mentioned that already. His face is kind of like deformed, he looks really different. Because of that, he has been homeschooled for most of his life to kind of avoid bullying, but then at one point, his family decides it's time for him to go to actual school now. I love this book so much because of the friendships that Augie Pullman makes when he gets into school. And the story is also told in multiple perspectives, like the mother, the father, I'm not sure the father is one of them, but the mother definitely, and, the, and his sister, and some of the friends that Augie Pullman makes, and even one of the bullies that bullies Augie Pullman. 
it's a really positive, heartwarming read that uh, it's just going to melt your heart. It's just going to want to make you be kind to literally everyone you meet. This book has changed my perspective on how I view people. It's definitely helped me try not to demonize any one group of people or any one person. My next recommendation is The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse by Charlie Mackesy. I think that's how you say it. I might be wrong. This is actually my favorite book of 2020. I think this is the only book that I've reread this year, and I've reread this three times. It is actually very thin, and most of the pages are blank, actually. Most of the pages are blank, and then there's like illustrations. Ooh. Yeah, it's like mostly illustrations and like really short quotes and lines from The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse obviously. Each of the pages is really thought-provoking and heartwarming. And the reason I actually read this three times this year is because every time I get stressed, I just like flip open the book where my bookmark is and then just read that line and look at that picture that's on that page. And it's definitely a form of self-care to read this book. So if you're looking for a book that will just make you, you know, relax and just like be at peace, then definitely check out The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse. Next book I'm going to recommend is another middle grade book, and that is Hoot by Carl Hiesen. Hiesen. I don't, I have no idea how you say this author's name. But Hoot follows our main character, Roy Everhart, and he recently moved from Montana to Florida, and he's being bullied. And one day while he was in the school bus, he notices that there's this guy who is running across, like, the street um, barefoot. For some reason, he's just really curious, like, what this guy is up to. Then he discovers something that is going on in the town that shouldn't be happening and it goes into this really super fun adventure. I think this classifies as contemporary if you were wondering. If you are a big fan of like stories that have to deal with you know like protecting the environment and just like being kind of an eco-warrior I would highly recommend this book. Otherwise still it's a pretty good book. It's one of my favorites so check it out. The next one is one of the few romances that I've ever read and that is Lovely War by Julie Berry. This copy was actually gifted to me from Julie Berry's son, one of my friends, so shout out to Daniel. This story follows two pairs of lovers during World War I and II, and it is told from the perspective of Greek gods and goddesses. So basically the premise of this book is Hephaestus catches Aphrodite cheating on him with um, Ares, the god of war, and in order to defend herself, Aphrodite goes on to tell this story about why love loves war, kind of like why Aphrodite loves Ares sort of a thing. So she tells the story of these four lovers, and honestly, I am not a romance reader, but this book was so good. It's just really heartwarming, it's a tearjerker, it will make you laugh, it will make you cry, it, it will just give you all the feels. You can also tell from reading this that Julie Berry did her research on World War I and II. Oh, and also, she did a lot of research on the role of black soldiers in World War I and II. I don't know which one. I'm pretty sure it's kind of both. And yeah, this is a really great book. Highly recommend it. Before I get to my last five recommendations, I have a music album recommendation for you. This album is also kind of a comforting, just really soothing album that you can listen to. And it's already pretty popular, but I'm going to recommend it anyway. And that is Folklore by Taylor Swift. Each of the tracks are just really, just really soothing. I'm not even, like I was a fan of Taylor Swift's previous work. Like I love her music. I like more of her older stuff than the newer ones. This was actually not very similar to her previous albums. Definitely give it a listen if you have not already. Next book I'm going to recommend actually started out as a very popular viral video of a poem that Thomas Roberts wrote um, on his channel Tom Foolery. He is a poet and a great realization is the poem that he wrote about 2020 and it is so good. If you don't read the book I and mean, you can just watch the original video, I'll have it linked in the description. It's just really thought provoking and it's really hopeful because you know in hindsight 2020 is kind of a it's been kind of a bad year, but the poem is just really positive and just like really optimistic about the future. The next book I'm going to recommend is a nonfiction, and that is Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel. I know some of you are probably thinking, wow, that is not a feel good book because it is the story of a psychologist who went through the Jewish Holocaust. Here's the thing, even though he does talk about, well, what was that? cats. Well, even though he does talk a lot about of his experiences during the Holocaust, he focuses more on what he's learned about the meaning of life. And it's just, it's really thought-provoking and moving. It is such an eye-opener. Like, I wish I could have learned all these truths without having to 
have him experience all these terrible things, but I am oh so grateful for this book. This is one of the best nonfiction books I've ever read. The next book I'm going to recommend is a pretty popular book, and that is The Lion, the Lich, the Lich, The Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. My copy is kind of battered because I've read this book ever since I was a child. I don't even know if I need to explain what this story is about, but if you've seen the movie, you probably have kind of an idea. But in case you don't, this book follows four siblings, Peter, Susan, Lucy, and Edmund, during the World War one or two? I don't know anything about history, so it's a world war. Because of this war, they are sent away from their home to the country, and they're sent to live with this professor, living in kind of like a really mysterious, huge mansion. And in the game of hide and seek, the youngest child, Lucy, discovers a magical world called Narnia. And she meets this super nice fellow, Mr. Tumnus, but I'm not... You probably already know what this book is about. It's basically, they discover this really magical world, and, you know, they have to save it. Pretty standard fantasy trope. It's super feel good. It has a lot of symbolism in it um, of like the fight between good and evil. And this is part of a seven book series, but this honestly can be a standalone. It was initially written as a standalone. So if you don't want to commit to the entire series, you can just read this book, go do it. The next book I'm going to recommend is actually one of my favorite books of 2020. And that is The Invention of Hugo Cabret by Brian Selznick. Half of the book is illustrations and half is words. There are a lot of illustrations that you just have like flip the pages like a lot. This book follows our main character, Hugo Cabret, who is an orphan. His father died in a fire and his father was sort of an inventor and left this automaton that he, he wasn't able to finish in the hands of Hugo. And he's just trying to figure out what this automaton does. If you're looking for a story about like, just like broken things and how all of us are just kind of broken in some way, shape or form and how that's okay and how we can be fixed then definitely check this book out. It's, it's so good. Before I get into my last book, another music album recommendation is Therapy Sessions by David Archuleta. This is actually inspired by David Archuleta's experience with therapy, it's kind of his journey of trying to embrace the fact that he needs help with his like mental health. And it's just a really positive, really, um, really soothing album. So definitely go check it out. I'll have Spotify links to these albums down below. And the last book I'm going to recommend is obviously one of my favorite books of all time. And this is a book that I've read multiple times whenever I felt down. When I was younger, I haven't read it recently, but when I was younger, every time I felt down, I would just like go pick up this book and read it again. And that is Because of Win dixie by Kate DiCamillo. This book follows our main character, India Obel Baloney. This is a middle grade book, by the way. And she lives in Florida. Her father is a preacher. She just recently moved to Florida and she, she doesn't have any friends, but because of a stray dog that she meets, Win dixie that she decides to adopt, she makes a lot of new friends in this town. And the reason I really love this book is because of the different personalities of the friends that she makes. They're just really awesome. The story is really heartwarming. They have different backgrounds. And once you get to know each of them, you're just, you just can't help but root for all of them. Even if you're not a fan of dog stories, because when I first read this, I wasn't really a dog person. Even if you're not a fan of dog stories, this is still a very lighthearted, heartwarming read. So definitely check it out. And that is it for my hopeful slash comforting slash feel good recommendations. I hope you guys pick at least one of these up. Let me know in the comments what you think of any of these books if you have read it, or if you're planning to pick any of these books up, let me know. I would love to chat with you in the comments about them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And please forget to subscribe so that you can do it later and have a good day.